miles is such a daunting distance yeah. that you have these large gaps between first and second place finishers. But this guy, you got to remember, in October of this year, he was over in Korea at a, at a marathon, and he had a little bit of a hamstring issue, and he dropped out at 15 miles. Yeah. So now he got himself back in order, got an invitation to come to the Honolulu Marathon, so it's a chance to redeem his year, and what a redemption it is. That's right. Okay, so any moment now, we're going to have the winner come across the finish line. It's going to be right behind us. Off of this, we have a one-man field at this point. It wasn't always that. Can you talk about the chess match, maybe at the point where it was just the, the two challengers, perhaps, coming down the, the stretch, and, and when uh, our winner was about to make that separation? Well, a lot of time, there's all this unspoken communication in a lead pack. When people are running shoulder to shoulder, they're not saying anything, but their body language. You sense the strength of the, of the other athlete. Right. You're monitoring your own strength, but you're sensing the strength of your opponent. And that's when you sense his weakness in your own strength, that's when you make your move. And so that's what they were doing. That's the chess match. How does I? How do I feel? How does he feel? And you make little testing moves to see if somebody responds, how quickly they respond. And when you sense the weakness, you put the pedal down all the way and try to drop them. Yeah, and regardless of that, we do have a one-man field right now. It's coming up right behind us. Yeah. This is incredibly exciting. Oh, my gosh, Tony, can, can you see him from where you are? Okay, it's, it's still a bit away. Okay, how about this? At this point, if he knows he's already got the victory, what is he doing? Is he is he is he going for a, a best? Is he no, no, he's just, his time? no, he's, no, he's, he's just what, what, no, he's energy? what do you call it? He's a 204 man. He's running 10 minutes slower than his oh, personal best. Oh, okay, his personal best was run in Milan, Italy last year in 2021. This year, as he nears the finish line, we just turned 214 on the clock today. Oh, we see a him. testament to the winds out there, and I can see him. So he's not he's not even thinking time at this Oh, point. forget about it. Okay. No. This okay. is all about the victory, the $25,000 first place check, and the, the honor, the pride of winning this historic 50th running of the great Honolulu Marathon. And he he is well aware of the rivalry between the oh. Ethiopians and the Kenyans, and 30, what this means I'm sure for the, for the country back home. 34 years old from Ethiopia, <laughs> unmarried, Asifa Mengstu takes the title in Honolulu Ooh. in year number 50. <laughs> 21439 unofficially. Oh. Whew. Little shake of the head. My goodness. Like boy, I earned that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. There's his coach, his coach, uh, Yurafu Derb. Right. Big hug from him. And you've talked to many a winner. Or and many a finisher uh, over your past 38 years of covering the Honolulu Marathon. What is a runner's body? What is a runner's mind going through at this point after they've crossed? Well, well, you're you're, you're enormously thrilled by your by your your effort, by your victory, but your body is now trying to just resettle into some normalcy. You've been on the two hours and uh, 14 minutes. He's been pushing it. Now all of a sudden he just stops, and you have to watch out that the body just doesn't seize up. It's not used to not moving. Moving now after this two hour plus. But these guys train seven days a week, 120, 140 miles. They've got this locked. I mean, this is what they do. They, this, they are professionals, and he proved that professional acumen out there today. That's right.